Now, Senator you. Roberts. Thank you again for being here today. Uh, my, my questions cover a broad range. In the Fair Work Commission statement dated 9th of April 2021 regarding the Casual Terms Award Review 2021, this review must be completed by 27th of September 2021. Are you on target for this date and what has been identified as going over that date so far? Uh, Thanks, Mr Furlong. I'll take this one as well. Thanks, Senator. Um, yes, the Fair Work Commission is definitely on target for that. That's a, a date that was set in the statute and we're, we're working towards that. So um, the Commission has issued a number of um, information papers outlining the range of um, casual terms that are found in modern awards. Um, a, a full bench has been listed for hearing to consider um, a small group of awards that cover either a, a large range of employees or have um, sort of quirky casual terms. And so they'll be looked at um, some, I guess, some principles or precedent will be set by that full bench and then that will be applied to the remaining modern awards. So we're working through that um, as okay. we speak. Thank you. Now, uh, from the Casual Terms Award Review 2021, at 12 and 13 of the Fair Work Commission statement, I note that the Black Coal Mining Industry Award MA501 has not been included in the initial review. Yet the background of that is that there's a lot of confusion and uncertainty in the coal mining, black coal mining industry because there, is no, there was no provision in the award for casuals on production. But nonetheless, the Hunter Valley CFMEU did a deal to get that into the e enterprise agreements. So that meant because there was no award provision, there was no, basically anybody under that EA was locked into permanent casual rort and they couldn't get out. Now with the legislation that the government introduced in March, there is a pathway to permanent work uh, for, for all casuals. But I think it needs to be clarified as much as quickly as possible. So. Many everyday Australians think it should have priority for the Black Coal Mining Award should have a def priority for a definition of a casual mine production worker, given the harm it's done to so many casual black coal miners, the lack of that definition. Can you ensure that this award is reviewed promptly, please? Um, Senator, um, well, obviously it's not for me to determine um, what order that the awards are looked at. That's a matter for the president and the full bench presiding over that. Um, I'd just like to clarify that the, the purpose of these um, um, proceedings are to determine whether the casual terms in the awards are um, compliant or um, not contradictory with the terms that were introduced in the supporting employment bill. It doesn't go to whether there are entitlements to casual work in a particular award. Um, the issue of whether there should be um, the possibility of casual engagement under the Black Coal Award was um, considered as part of the four yearly review. And I think um, Mr Furlong has spoken to that at previous estimates and it's been covered in some of our um, questions on notice. Um, so um, that's perhaps a, a different issue um, that could be raised at, and it could be raised at any time if the parties were to seek to include a casual term for those production employees under the Black Coal Award. Okay. so. There's nothing to stop uh, a, a casual worker who's on permanent casual rort at the moment, thanks to enterprise agreements, from actually casual conversion if they're if they're offered that conversion now. No, I'm sorry, Senator. The, um, there is no provision for casual employment for a production employee under the Black Coal Award. So, if I might, um, so the my understanding of the legislation it it covers. Um, because it's been placed into the National Employment Standards, it applies broader than all the awards. So if someone is a casual, whether there's an award term for casuals or not, then the, um, the provisions within the Act will apply. So yes, there is a pathway to conversion because it's been put into the National Employment Standards. Okay, so thank you. So it over, thank you, over, over, Sorry. overrides the award. So yeah, people... I, I apologise, Senator, for not giving that. Yeah, so, so just to be clear, Mr Hare, the people who are working as casuals when the changes were made in March will now have access to conversion once, once they're offered. So um, that's my understanding because it's been placed into the National Employment Standards. It expands beyond the award system 
and does apply more broadly. Thank you, because there are a lot of people cursing enterprise agreements that basically lock them into permanent casuals. How long after this review? We asked a couple of questions yesterday about these, these matters with the conversion. Um, under 15 employees, there will be you, a different O'Neill. situation. But I, I guess one of the things that we got yesterday that's important was it's a test of reasonableness about whether those um, coal miners will actually be able to oh, that test get is all, yeah. the yeah. reasonableness test. Roberts, yeah, yeah. The call, Senator O'Neill. Yeah. I, I'm sure you well, appreciate it's, it's uh, How long after council, Senator Roberts? In the Fair Work Commission statement dated 9th of April 2021 regarding the Casual Terms Award Review 2021 at 12, I note the hesitancy regarding the definition of simple terms. Can you advise if your concerns over, concerns over language will hold up the review process or have they been resolved? Um, no, Senator, I think that we're still on track to meet that deadline of the 27th Thank you. of September. Okay. So we've been advocating for a fair go for Australian workers for a while now. Since the last Senate estimates round, can you tell me what due diligence has been put in place for Fair Work Commissioners to use to ensure that the boot analysis improves and that we do not see any more failures like the Chandler MacLeod Northern District of New South Wales Black Coal Mining Agreement of 2015? My understanding is that there, were no, there was no enterprise agreement. The Chandler MacLeod initially employed miners under the award where there was no provision for, for casuals. Then they came up with the enterprise agreement and that breached the boot test from what we can work out. So we need to make sure that miners are protected in future with, uh, a war, uh, with enterprise agreements to comply with the boot test. Can you tell me what's being done like that to make sure there's no more failures? Just um, a couple of things on, on this, Senator. Um, it's actually been um, you know, with on uh, on notice um, to to a reasonable sort of extent um, in relation to the um, the decision about the Town McLeod agreement. It was approved by Senior Deputy President Harrison, um, and while the, the decision was short, she um, did um, go to to the boot and the analysis of the boot. Um, Ms. Levy can provide um, further and better detail on it, um, but every agreement application that is made. Uh, to the Commission undergoes a, um, a, a very comprehensive um, administrative um, uh, checklist um, which is performed by specially skilled staff um, to ensure that the statutory requirements of um, um, and the pre lodgement provisions are, are satisfied. Um, and in terms of Ms Levy saying that 95% um, of those applications are, are made um, and provided to chambers within, uh, to members within five days, that is the process that, that is undertaking that first, uh, that first step. Okay, I'm having a lot of trouble hearing you um, or understanding. Could, could you just explain, perhaps you could explain, you, I understand that you've got a, a re, given us a reassurance that the process is going to be followed. Could you please explain the boot analysis process? What are the main steps that the Commission now undertakes and is it applied appropriately to each case? The answer to that question is, uh, is yes. There's a legislative checklist um, that is completed by, um, by, as I said, especially trained staff at the Commission. The um, a template of that checklist is available on our website as well. If, you, uh, if you'd like to, to have a look at it, we can certainly uh, table it for you to have a look at. Um, but is it, a cons it is a consistent checklist um, that is, that is uh, performed for every enterprise agreement application that is made. Okay, thank you. I heard it clearly that time. So we'll check that checklist ourselves. We've heard that some union bosses are saying that it is the workers' responsibility, not the unions, for what is put to the Commission in relation to enterprise agreements. Can you tell me then how you ensure that the workers themselves are happy with the agreement? And what, what, what uh, checks do you have to make sure that you're satisfied that it's the workers that are happy with the enterprise agreement? Um, Ms. Levy may want to add add to add to this, but uh, effectively there's a um, there's an access period uh, that is for, uh, that a statutory access period, Senator, um, that all um, uh, every every um, every employee who's to be covered by that enterprise agreement um, has got access to that agreement, um, and that the employer has gone um, to um, reasonable lengths to explain the terms of the impact of that enterprise agreement. Ms. Levy, would you like to add anything to that? Certainly, so, Mr. Furlong. So, I guess there's um, a few strands to it that the member who 
um, assesses the application will look at um, whether the um, the terms and the effect of the terms of the agreement were effectively explained to the employees. That's an important test that's been um, the, the subject of a number of um, federal court decisions and quite clearly laid out in terms of the level of detail that must be explained to the employees to give them an opportunity to um, vote in an informed way. And then clearly there is the vote itself so that the um, there must be a majority of employees who vote for the agreement. Um, to vote in favour of it. So they're the, the primary tests. Thank you. Um, we're also quite transparent about the fact that an application has been made so an employee um, will have an opportunity to make a submission to the Commission if they choose to do so. So what recourse do workers have through the Commission or, or anywhere else where a union boss fails to do what they promised to bargain for or where they might ignore workers' needs in favour of their own interests? How do we make sure union bosses are held accountable in this process for um, approving an EA, Enterprise Agreement? I think, Senator, um, the, the Commission, as I said, we're quite transparent in terms of when an application is lodged. It's always published on our website immediately. Um, so it's available for the employees to see um, before the application is approved. And during that time, um, it's not uncommon for an employee to contact the Commission and their um, email or letter that they put in will be sent directly to the member who's dealing with the application. So if they've raised any concerns, that will be brought to the member's attention. So what you're saying is, it seems reasonable to me, what you're saying is that if an employee has concerns about the employer or the union bosses, that they need to go and check themselves and take responsibility for the enterprise agreement themselves before they vote? Um, Vote, inform themselves it, so they vote in, in, in an informed way. Yeah, yes, definitely, and it's right. the employer's responsibility to inform them of the effect of the agreement. So Thank that's a, a quite a big, um, proactive step that the employer needs to take. Okay, have so there the, been... May, may also, sorry, there may also be assistance. If, if the agreement is, um, is reached um, or passed its normal expiry date, um, a, a party or an employee who's covered by that enterprise agreement um, that is past its normal expiry date to make an application for that agreement to be terminated. Okay, so it, it gets fairly complicated, doesn't it, quickly. Uh, have there been any cases regarding casual conversion put to the Commission for determination since the changes to the Fair Work Act earlier this year? And if so, how many and what have been the issues and the results? Um, Senator, I can take that one. There's been one application so far under the new section 66M. Um, that application was uh, an employee in the um, social and community services sector. It was only recently received and it's been allocated to a member for hearing. Okay, so one application for an appeal to conversion, correct? Yes. Thank you. That's correct. Um, now, moving on to another topic, have wage theft cases increased or decreased in the last 12 months? That's a, uh, that's a matter for the Fair Work Ombudsman. Um, so I understand that they're giving evidence um, later this evening. Yes, we've got some questions for them. Thank you. Um, small business owners frequently find that the cost of being away from work to defend a sometimes spurious unfair dismissal case or other complaint is too much, and they end up paying go-away money, which everyone knows about, to the employee. What is the Fair Work Commission doing, or what could you do, to help small businesses and small business employees, especially given that they've done the heavy lifting during the COVID uh, restrictions and downturn, and many are finding it hard now, both employees and small businesses. Uh, I'm not too sure. Um, I understand that the the, uh, the notice of the term "go away" money, um, Senator. I, I I can't say that I um that um that I, I necessarily agree agree with it. Um, there are we received approximately fifteen thousand uh, fifteen thousand unfair dismissal applications um, every year. Um, about 80% of those applications um, are resolved through agreement, through a conciliation process. What percentage, um, I'm sorry? About 80% of those are resolved through that. And they are, um, by the vast majority of them are conducted um, online, uh, so on the telephone, um, at a time that hopefully uh, suits both of the, uh, both of the parties um, through that process. Um, and there is no obligation um, for the parties, the, the small business that you're talking about, employers to or the employees, obviously the applicants, to settle um, 
but if they arrive um, at, a, at, a, at, a, at, a, um, at a settlement through that process, then the matter is finalised. Um, they can obviously um, decide not to settle at that point and, uh, and have the matter dealt with by, by a member through arbitration. Okay. Um, Ms Brothers, anything else you'd like to add to that? Thank you, Mr Furlong. Uh, Senator, I might just add uh, as a, a useful bit of context that in about two thirds of cases where money is paid, it's for less than $6,000. So they are modest amounts of money that are paid when payments are made. And payments are made in around 80% of matters that are settled. Yeah, my, my point is that it, the Fair Work Act, when it's printed out, is about that thick, laid on its side, is that thick. It is so damn complex that employees and employers don't know where, small business employers and employees don't know where they stand. Many employees right across industry, all sizes of companies, don't know where they stand. And that, that's not good enough. So with that, there comes, it's much easier for one to rort the other, employer to, to rort the employee, to, to, and also for, for people to avoid accountability. So the complexity of the Fair Work Act is really hindering employment and hindering the, the employer-employee relationship, which is the fundamental relationship on a workplace. So that, that's why I, I'm asking that question, because we, we know, talking to small businesses, listening to them, that they are not hiring people at times because of the complexity and their fear of what will happen. And that, that, that we've got to remove that. Um, Senator, there was a part of your question that we, uh, that we didn't get to is about, about what we can do or what we are doing. Um, there are a couple of very large projects that are underway at the moment um, to, um, to improve the, the, the services of the Commission. One of them, um, and it's a very large project, is the redevelopment of our website. Um, and at the moment, um, the language used on our website is, is, um, is technical. Um, and one of the uh, one of the major changes, one of the major improvements, um, is there's going to be um, the new website is going to be written in very accessible plain language. Uh, we're aiming for someone with a year level a year level um, literacy of year, year um, eight to, to ten. Um, we're also just um, just kicked off a forms redevelopment uh, project um, that applies or that they will be applying data and, uh, and behavioural insights, so behavioural economic insights to ensure that the regulatory burden associated with um, with making these applications um, and that people are informed as best as they possibly can be um, are a part of the uh, part of the process. So we are looking at ways that we can improve our service delivery and we're acting on them at the moment. Well, thank you, that's encouraging. Fundamentally though, the Fair Work Act is highly complex and it doesn't matter how we dress it up in, in, in uh, practical language, it's still going to be complex. That makes it difficult for both employees and employers to know their what they're accountable for and what their, what their entitlements are. So I appreciate you raising that, thank you. Uh, last questions on just another topic here. Can you please undertake to inform on the status of the award modernisation process that you're undertaking? Uh, you're referring to the four yearly review of modern award, are you Yes. That? Okay. Do you have any any um, any questions um, in particular about the about the review? It's a very very large piece of work. Um, is it progressing on schedule? It is. It's very close to, to, to being finalised. Um, there are a number of um, of common issues, and, and Ms. Lee can to talk to the talk to these. Um, but one of the major initiatives that's um, that's still being progressed is uh, is the plain language um, writing or rewriting of um of a number of, of um, awards that are that have got high um high award reliance. So high award reliance. So those awards that have got a um a lot of employees covered by them or, or relying on them to, to set out their terms and conditions. So, um, Ms. Lee, would you like to add anything else to that? Certainly. Thanks, Mr. Fallon. Thanks, Senator. Um, so the four yearly review has, as you know, been going on for a number of years. Um, in terms of the award specific reviews, there's only seven awards that are outstanding of the 122 that we started with. There are five of those awards are undergoing um, what we're referring to as a plain language review, which goes to the point you were just making and Mr. Furlong was making about trying to make the terminology less complex. Um, and the others are um, the Nurses Award, um, which is probably, um, it's very close to completion. We're hoping it'll be completed by the end of July. A final draft has been published of that award and it's just out for comment to make, ensure that there are no um, 
technical or drafting issues that have been um, incorporated in it. And the final other award is the Black Coal Mining Award, um, where there's one issue in relation to the interaction between um, shift work and weekend work penalties and the casual loading for staff employees. Um, there was a conference about that yesterday, but I understand the parties couldn't come to an agreed position. So there's a further conference scheduled in a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, so there are the award specific issues and then there are a number of common issues across the awards um, that have um, progressed. But again, there's only a small number of those that are left of the, um, of the vast number of um, reviews that were undertaken over the last six years. So while I see it as tinkering, it is a, it is a good step for, for having um, modernisation and simplification of the language in particular, so everyone knows where they stand. Certainly, Senator, we agree. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Senator Wright.